Lesson 9-6, Solve Systems of Equations by Graphing. Okay, what systems of equations means is that when you just have two or more equations, for the, I believe for the rest of this chapter, we're just going to look at two equations. Okay, so um, when they both have using X and Y, so like one of them doesn't have F and G, they both have X and Y, so we have two equations, and that means there is one solution to them. The solution is going to be a point X, Y. Okay, so this one, they just told us the solution is 10, 50, because you can check that. If X is 10, Y should be 50, so I can plug those in for X and Y and see if it's true. So we can plug 10 in for X, 50 in for Y. 5 times 10 is 50, so that one is true. The other equation, 2 times 10 is 20, plus 30 equals 50, so that one is also true. Okay, so... This just says solve the system of equations by graphing y equals x and y equals negative 3x plus 4. That would be the only two pieces of information they would give you. You would draw a graph. So then we look, just like our last section, we see if they're in slope-intercept form. The y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus nothing, which means plus b would be 0. But they're in the right form, so we can just find our slope and y-intercept. So y equals x, to graph that, your slope is what's in front of x, which is 1. So I have that my m is 1. And there's nothing being added, so your y-intercept is 0, which means the point zero, 0, So to graph that one, you would start at the very center, the origin. Your slope is 1, which means you go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I always graph several points, and then... You might go the other way a few, so down one, left one, to continue your line, because we don't know at this point where they are going to intersect. That's what we're solving. The point where these two equations, when you graph them, would intersect, where they cross. Okay, so then to graph this one, my slope here is negative 3, which means negative 3 over 1. Remember, slope is always a fraction. And my y-intercept is positive 4. That is the point... 0, 4. That means that is where it crosses the y-axis, and that is the point where x is always 0. So I go up to 4 on the y-axis and put a point. My slope is negative 3. So that means I go down 3, right 1. Down 3, let's see, 1, 2, 3, right 1. And then if you notice on your line, they cross right here, and that is at the point 1, 1. So that would be your answer or your solution. If you want to check it, you just plug it back into the equations. That means when x is 1, y should also equal 1. 1 equals 1. That's true. On the other one, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So 1 equals 1 again. So that is your solution. So I know this is a lot. I want you to try this one. Solve the system of equations by graphing. Okay, so in your notes, you should have them graphed, but for the computer, you're just going to have to tell me your solution as a point. So we're solving for these equations by graphing. I have y equals x plus 2 and y equals negative 2x minus 4. So the first thing we look at, what is your slope and y-intercept? So slope on this one is what's out front of x, which is a 1. So as a fraction, 1 over 1. My y-intercept, or the point where it crosses the x-axis, is 2. So to graph that one, I'll just call this line A so you see which one I'm doing. I go up to 2 on the y-axis, and that's my first point. My slope is 1, so I go up 1 over 1. I'm going to continue it for a few points. And I might even go the other way. If I wanted to see where it went the other way, I would just go backwards, down 1, left 1. Okay, there is my line A. Now, if that confuses you, you can always do it the long way which is make a table of x and y values. Remember where your function rule, I guess technically where that would be the rule. So you could say, I want to know where x is at negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You would plug those in for that because it's already in the y equals form. This is your x plus 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2. Those would be points, okay? If that is easier for you, that's the point negative 1, 1. 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4. I have points there, okay? That's another way you can do it if you can't figure out how to graph an equation. Just turn it into a table. Okay, so now I'm going to graph my line B. Y equals negative 2x minus 4. 
my slope here is negative 2. So for your graph, that would be negative 2 over 1. My y-intercept is the point 0, negative 4. So I go down to negative 4 on the y-axis. And then my slope is negative 2 over 1. That means I go down 2, right 1. Okay, well, I'm trying to figure out where they intersect. That's how we solve it. So to go backwards, I would go up to left one. And they intersect right there, which is the point, negative 2, 0. So my solution on this is negative 2, 0. Okay, so example 2. Ma Marjorie and Brian are selling magazine subscriptions. Marjorie sells three times as many subscriptions as Brian. Brian sells 12 fewer subscriptions than Marjorie. A says write a system of, of equations to represent this situation. B, solve the system by graphing and explain what the solution means. So A is probably to me the hardest part of this because you're having to set up your two equations. So if we go back, Marjorie sells three times as many subscriptions as Brian. So I'm going to say Marjorie is my Y. So however many she equals, sales or is equal to is going to be three times brine so we have marjorie equals three times brine and it says brine sells 12 fewer subscriptions than marjorie so marjorie which is why if brine sells 12 fewer than her you wouldn't say y minus 12 you would just say okay it's going to be him brine plus 12 more is going to equal how many she would sell that's why that one's kind of hard to set up so there's your two equations, then we graph them. So 3x, my slope is 3, y-intercept is 0. And if you notice their graph, they only show the first quadrant because it's all positive, because you can't sell a negative number of magazines. You either sell 0 or you sell a positive amount. Okay, so they graphed those two equations using slope and y-intercept, and they found that they crossed at kind of a weird spot but it came out to 618. Well, I guess not technically, it's exactly between those. So then you could plug them back in. All it means by going back and explaining it is the, uh, let's see, Marjorie, she was Y, she sells 18 subscriptions and Brian sells six. Okay, so you're gonna try number two. I'm not really gonna make you um, graph number two because I graphed it ahead of time and it comes out to a crazy graph. We'll talk about that part in class. But on number two, I want you to practice setting up the equations to represent the situation, part A. So try that and then I will go over it with you. Okay, on number two, it says, sorry, my little piece broke to hold this, but it says a doctor's office has twice as many new patients as existing patients. The number of new patients is 22 more than the number of existing patients. Okay, so part A says write a system of equations to represent this situation. Then B, we are solving them by graphing. It says explain what the solution means. Okay, so if I go back and read it, it says a doctor's office has twice as many new patients as existing patients. So I'm going to make Y my new patients. So that means my new patients are twice as many as existing patients. So that means I have two times the existing patients. That will equal my new patients. So there's my first equation. The second one was a little easier to set up because it says the number of new patients, so y, is equals 22 more than the number of existing patients. So you could say 22 plus or x plus 22, either one. So there's my two equations. That's your answer to part A. Okay, example three, we're solving the system of equations by graphing. So if you notice these two equations here, we first check to see if in the right form, the y equals mx plus b form, and they are not. This first one is, but this one is not. So we're going to have to rearrange it to get it there. So that means we've got to solve for y. So I get rid of this x by subtracting it across the equal sign. Okay, well, six doesn't have an x, and this one does, so we can't combine those. Okay, so from there I have 3y equals, I'll go ahead and write it the other way first to show you. So we just say 6 minus x. Now, from here, I want mx first and then the plus b. So I look at the sign. That is a negative x. So I have 3y equals negative x. And that 6 is positive, so plus 6. Now, all I did was switch those. 
So that way it's in the right form. But I've got to get y by itself. So now I want the y to stay there and just get rid of the 3. So I divide. The reason we typically divide last is because you have to divide everything, not just once on both sides. So I get y equals, this is negative 1 over 3x, so I just leave it that, negative 1 over 3x, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So these are my two equations now, and we can graph them using our slope and our y-intercept. So here, when there's nothing out front of it, your slope is 1, so my slope is 1, your y-intercept is negative 2, which means that is the point 0, negative 2. It's always the point where it crosses your y-axis. That's the point where we start. So to graph that first one, I go 0, negative 2, put a point. My slope is 1, which means I go up 1, over 1. And you could continue that for several points. If you wanted to continue your line the other way, you would go down 1, left 1. So there's my first equation. The second one, let me switch colors. My slope is negative 1 over 3. That's my m. My y-intercept is 2, which is the point 0, 2. So I graph that first. 0, go up 2. My slope is negative 1 third, which means you go down 1 over 3, not down 3. Down 1 over 3. Okay, and they intersect right here. That is the point 3, 1. That would be your solution. You can plug that x and y in to the original equations to check, and they should both be true. 1 equals 1, yes. 6 equals 6, yes. So our solution is 3, 1. Okay, on number 3, you are going to solve these equations by graphing. Okay, so you got to rearrange them first in slope-intercept form. You can't enter your graph on the computer, but you can tell me your solution after you graph it in your notes. So try that, and then I will go over it with you. On number three, we're solving by graphing again. So on this one, we first have to make sure they're in the y equals mx plus b form, that slope-intercept form, because that's what we've been using to graph, is our slope and our y-intercept. So this one is already in that form. So my slope here is 3, or 3 over 1. My y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, is negative 3. So on this one, we first have to rearrange it before we can figure out the slope and the y-intercept. So I need to move the x to the other side of the equal sign because we're trying to solve for y. Now, I can't combine those, but I'm going to go ahead and put my x first because it's mx plus b. So what that means, I just write what it is. So it's minus x or negative x. That's a positive 8, so plus 8. Now, to recap, you can't combine those, so that's 8 minus x. All I did was swap them around. The x is negative and the 8 is positive. Okay, so from here, I still have to get rid of this 2. It's being multiplied, so I divide everything by 2. That's why we typically divide last, because it has to go to everything, not just once on both sides of the equal sign. Now, this is negative 1x divided by 2, so I'm going to keep it negative 1 half x. That's what that basically says. And then plus 8 divided by 2 is 4. This is my equation to where we can now find our slope, negative 1 over 2, y-intercept is 4. Okay, so we are just now where we can graph. So our first one, my y-intercept was negative 3, slope was also 3. So I go to negative 3 on the y-axis, put a point, my slope is positive 3, so that means I go up 3, right 1. Okay, if I wanted to go the other way, I would just do it backwards. Down three, left one to continue my line. Okay, there is that one. My next line, my y-intercept is four, slope is negative one-half. So I go up to four. Now when it's a fraction, that actually makes it nice for slope. Negative one-half means I go down one, right two. So they intersect right here. That is the point 2, 3. So that is my solution of those equations. Okay, example 4 says solve each system of equations by graphing. So we're doing the same thing, but we're going to look at a couple of special cases. So first of all, we look. It's already in the right form, so we can just graph. My slope on this one is negative 1. 
which means for graphing purposes, we wanted a fraction, so that is negative 1 over 1. My y-intercept is positive 1, so that is the point 0, 1. I'm going to go ahead and graph that one. So I go to 0, 1, put a point. My slope is negative 1 over 1, so I go down 1, right 1. You, oh, I didn't mean to put a point there. So you always go up or down, then right. To go the opposite way, you just do the opposite. So I go up 1, left 1. So there's that line. Then my next equation. I have where my slope again is negative 1, so negative 1 over 1, and my y-intercept on this one is negative 3, so the point 0, negative 3. So I graph that, I go down to negative 3, my slope is negative 1, so down 1 over 1. Since I ran out of room, we kind of need to go the other way, so up 1, left 1, just to continue your line. Now, if you notice, these two lines are parallel. They are never going to touch. So, that means they're never going to intersect anywhere. So, the answer is no solution. So, we have our no solution symbol. Okay, we're going to look at another example. On this one, one of them is already in y equals mx plus b form. The other one is not. So, we add x to the other side. So, I have one half y equals x plus 2. Now I have to get rid of the 1 half. It's being multiplied so we would divide, but it's a fraction. So we flip it and multiply both sides times 2. So think of this as distributing on that side. So that cancels and I have y equals 2x plus 4. got my x plus 4. Thank you. So now my slope here is 2. My y-intercept is 4. So I go up to 4. Go up 2 over 1. So to go the other way, down 2, left 1. Okay, and then the first equation, 2x plus 4. It's the same thing. I go up to 4, up 2 over 1. Or go backwards, down 2, left 1. So they are the exact same line. So because of that, everywhere on that line is a solution because it's all a point. So our answer to this one is infinitely many. So I like what this table says over here. You probably want to write these down. It says when you're looking at graphing system of equations, if they have a different slope, one solution. If they have the same slope but different y-intercepts, kind of like on A over here, they have the same slope but different y-intercepts, it's going to be no solution because that means they're going to be parallel. If they have the same slope and same y-intercept, it's infinitely many. Basically, if they're the same equation, it's going to be infinitely many. Okay, before we try some of these on our own, I want you to copy this down. You don't have to draw all this extra stuff. I just want you to draw these graphs and put one solution, no solutions, infinitely many. You can also put parallel with this one. So pause the video to do that and then we'll look at some problems. Okay, so now what I want you to do after copying that table down is let's go ahead and do just 4a. So try 4a. You're going to graph those e system of equations. Don't worry about 4b and then I will go over it with you. In 4a, we have y equals x plus 4 and y equals x. So we're solving by graphing. So again, here my slope is 1 or 1 over 1. My y-intercept is 4. On this one, my slope again is 1. There's nothing being added, so that tells me your y-intercept is 0. Okay, so my first one, my y-intercept is 4. So I go up to 4 on the y-axis, put a point. My slope is 1, so that just means it's up 1, right 1. Super easy or down one, left one, to continue it the other way. I just wanted to see where it crosses the other axis. Okay, there's that line. Then this one, my sl or excuse me, well, my y-intercept is zero, so I start at the origin. Can't talk. My slope is one, so up one over one. Or down one, left one. Okay, so if we look at the graph, they are parallel. Parallel lines, by definition, never intersect. So my solution on this one is no solution. 
there is no point where they're ever going to intersect because they're parallel. Now, another trick, remember what we talked about, if I go back and look, my slope on both of them was 1. Equations that have the same slope will always be parallel. Okay, but we still had to graph it because it said solve by graphing. But that's a way to check yourself, that they should be parallel.